hello students welcome to the class we will start today the electrostatics capacitor is already there video and we will start today the electrostatics particularly the beginning portion of the electrostatics so our discussion begins with in the discussion of electrostatics it contains two parts first is the electro and second is the statics in electro portion this will give you the idea of charge and statics is the science with rest so therefore study of charge at rest is called electrostatics study What is important to understand is that the property of charge is different in different situation. For example, if the charge has two state, one rest, if we talk about rest, it should be electrostatics. If we talk about motion, motion will include two parts. One is the uniform and another as you have the idea of your previous knowledge, another motion is accelerated or retarded which we call non-uniform and that matter has to be included into the group oscillating. So this uniform motion gives a study that is here we will see it is current electricity. And this oscillating charge gives rise to a new phenomenon that is electromagnetic wave. This is the basically and we have to study our discussion of electrostatics that is charge at rest. Question arises what is charge? If we talk about charge, charge governs the electrical behavior of the surrounding. Electrical behavior of the surrounding as well as the substance. So charge you already have the idea that it is of two types. One charge that is on electron you already know that is negative one charge is on proton that is positive it tells about the nature and if you want to talk the magnitude of charge electron or proton has 1.6 into 10 to power minus 19 coulomb Coulomb is the unit of charge and charge is a scalar quantity. Charge is a scalar quantity. Now the thing is that atom on the whole is neutral. What does it mean? It means that number of proton is equal to number of electron so next charge is zero whenever whenever the number of proton is not equal to number of electron charge develops from the prior discussion of your junior classes you already have the idea that Sodium has the atomic number 11. What does it mean? This means atomic electronic configuration is 281 number of electron number of proton that is equals to 11. 
number of electron number of proton that is electron so the charge on the sodium is zero now if we talk about the stability sodium attains its stability in this way this electron it loses so what is the result na has converted into na plus number of electron has become 10 number of proton is equals to 11 so number of electron greater than number of proton when number of electron is greater than number of proton what is the result atom is positively charged similarly we can take here what we are seeing we are seeing that the loss of electron takes place similarly we can talk about gain of electron take the example of chlorine chlorine has atomic number 17 so electronic configuration is 287 ultimately we can understand one electron it gains result is negative ion negative ion has formed and it has gained the stability now you see number of electron 18 number of proton 17 so number of here number of electron is not greater number of electron is less than number of proton number of electron is less than number of proton here number of electron is more than number of proton so what we can conclude whenever the number of electron is more than number of proton the result is negative charge and whenever the number of electron is less than number of proton the result is positive charge so what is the result result is that transfer of electron develops charge on an atom this transfer can be of two types one is addition one is removal addition develops negative charge removal develops positive charge just now we have seen so transfer of electron when you will see the atomic structure you will see that here neutron and proton are there and electron is revolving in different orbits now this is your nucleus what I mean to say you can say that charge can be developed by transfer of proton also but large amount of energy is required in order to remove proton from the nucleus because it is strongly attached with the nucleus by the nuclear force therefore it is easier to remove or add electrons in comparison to proton so nature favors that what we are doing we are only transfer of electron can develop charge not the transfer of proton so all of you should remember that transfer of electron develops charge not the transfer of proton because proton is st strongly attached with the nucleus attached and resides inside the nucleus this matter should be clearly understood by you people now we should understand in our day to day life how the charging is possible so what are the practical methods of charging a body so one common example that you already know is that when we comb our dry hair the comb acquires the property of attracting a small bit of papers why due to charging so 
methods of charging if we include first method we can say friction or rubbing first method is friction or rubbing by which charging is possible second method is called conduction in this direct touch is there between charging body and uncharged and uncharged body and third method is method of induction third method is method of induction in which not direct contact so these are the three methods by which in general in our day to day life charging process takes place now in the next class i will be discussing with you how the friction or rubbing develops the charge how conduction develops the charge and how induction develops the charge and this matter will further clarify your concept in understanding the charge in a fundamental manner thank you have a nice day